Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Lead Ministry Live and the Lead Volunteers Podcast. I've been super excited. This is going to be a fun one today. Uh, very grateful that you're here. Again, we do this on the regular for three main reasons. Number one, we want you, the ministry leader, to get organized. We want you, the ministry leader, to stop the revolving door of volunteers, really. And third, we want to help you prevent ministry burnout. Well, again, this is Josh Denhart with Lead Ministry Live and the Lead Volunteers Podcast. Quick thing, over the last year, I wrote a book. It's called Ministry Insights, 52 Timeless Tips for You to Lead in Your Ministry. And so this book is, it is we actually have it priced as free on my website, leadministry.com. It's priced as free. All you need to do is pick up the shipping. Uh, it's something that leaders across the country are using as their weekly meeting agenda. It's kind of the kind of the meat of their meeting, so to speak. So we're super excited. Today's going to be a lot of fun. We have a special guest today. Uh, some of you may know her, some of you may not, but she's one who is worthy of knowing. She's been around for a long time. She has been a consistent force in some very, very, very big ministries. And so it's my pleasure to welcome Miss Cynthia Dixon. Hello, Miss Cynthia. How are you? Hi, Josh. Hi. How are you? I am good. So grateful to have you here. And uh, it was fun to connect Thank with you. you at a national conference not all that long ago. And so here's the interesting thing. I'm going to have you introduce yourself in just a minute. But I must say, the title today, it says Victories and Challenges of a Big Ministry. Now, you have worked for some of the largest ministries in the country. You have been a part of and a leader in the big ones, churches that are well over 10,000 people, churches that are 20,000 people. And so, you know, that I worked for a church of 2,000 and I thought that was big. I mean, that's a whole new level. But we're going to talk today about the challenges and the victories of, of big ministry. And quick hint to everyone out there, the challenges are identical. Am I right, Cynthia? Exactly. The same. The, the same. same challenges. The, they're the same. And so, but it's, a, it's an interesting perspective to talk with someone who's been at a church at, at that capacity and at that level. Well, give us a quick introduction to yourself, would you, Cynthia? My name is Cynthia Dixon, and I have been serving in children's ministry for over 25 years. But, Josh, I'm not going to tell my whole age when I say 25 years, so that means <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. And so uh, currently I am married, and I have uh, four children. And, and so uh, I'm a, a mom. I, I serve in ministry. But I also work for uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, and my pastor is uh, Tony Evans, Dr. Tony Evans. Yes. And so I give it an honor, and, uh, and it's a privilege to serve him and serve this ministry. Uh, I've also have served at the Potter's House with uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes as a children's uh, director there as well, and some, some other places. So i kind of been around a few places sure. here and there. Um I'm currently in school at the same time, and so, you know, I must be losing my mind trying to <laughs> go to school. Uh, and, 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 and tell uh, us what you're going to school for. I'm, I'm very curious. I'm going to school for uh, uh, theology, uh, social theology. Uh, I want to okay. learn about the mind uh, in ministry uh, more so, and and so I, and the social being of a person. Yes. And so I'm doing a, a specialized uh, study in that uh, currently where I'm at I love school it. at. So can you imagine the children's ministry director here at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship going attending school, a wife, a mom of four. You're a busy girl. You're a, you're a busy girl. Well, I'll tell you what. I have attended church at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. And man, what a dynamic, dynamic, dynamic ministry. So we're super grateful. Again, today we're talking about victories and challenges to a big, big ministry, the challenges of a big ministry. But again, like we said earlier, you know, they're actually just challenges that we all experience. So we kind of try to define it, we try to develop it, and we try to do it. And so what I want to do real quick is help us. What it says, the first topic here says big ministries equals 
same troubles. And I, I had to laugh as we were talking before we started this thing. They are the same, aren't they? So tell us kind of the big, the big ones that you've encountered over the years that are, that are always there. Tell us. One of the challenges that's always be there is not having enough volunteers. <laughs> and I know that people who say, well, you, go, you attend a large church. We still don't have enough volunteers. And so even if you're a church of 15 and yes. a church of 15,000, we still have the issue of not having enough people that want to serve in kids ministry. That's right. And you know, Josh, a lot of times I believe it's just people are fearful of serving with other kids. Uh, I think sometimes people feel like, oh, I have to be the perfect person, you know, to be over there serving with the kids. And some people just plainly just don't want to be around kids. Right. And so, uh, and, and so that's the same thing that happens in a smaller church. We have to do our recruitment process just like anyone else. Yes. Uh, our num the difference between the smaller church and a larger ministry is that we just have more kids. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. Same issue, <laughs> same issue but just on a bigger style. Well, and so, I, I have to tell you, Years ago, I was at a big national conference. It was one of the biggest churches in the country. And the it was a children's pastor's conference mm -hmm. at one of these big churches. And the yeah. senior pastor of that church had a lot of, you know, notoriety at that time. And and as I was sitting there and he was he was, you know, doing his talk or whatever, it was about volunteers. I sat back and I said to myself, man. It must be easy to get volunteers at a church this size. And I'm not, I'm telling you, not 15 seconds later, Cynthia, he said, now somebody out there is probably thinking, man, it must be easy to get volunteers at a church this size. And I was like, I literally just thought that. And so, and he said, there's nothing further from the truth. And he said, just, he goes, it actually makes it harder that we're bigger. So to dismiss or, you know, kind of like, deconstruct in a sense somebody out there who says well it if your church is if, if we were just bigger it'd get easier that's simply not true not true and you know josh one thing is that people often think because we're able to have hired staff they think that that covers for the entire ministry no. where smaller churches are not able to do that on that scale but we are but the higher staff is just only for not orga to organize the massive, the, the massive and the masses of volunteers. Exactly. And so uh, people confuse the two they do. and thinking, oh, you have a staff and you're hired. You should, you know, have plenty of people. People want to serve. Yes. But it's not true. And, and they think in a sense that if you have staff, that everything is covered. And I have to tell you, you know, like I said, I was at a, at a church that was, mm -hmm. you know, 2000, which is, is large on, uh, to some, interestingly enough, we did the math, Cynthia, and we found out that we had like the volunteer slots that we had, it was 1.6% of the slots were filled by staff and 97 point, whatever were filled 98 point, whatever were filled by volunteers. And so we made that known pretty regularly to people that we literally couldn't do it without you. And the, and the senior pastor at that big church at that conference, he said something that stuck with me forever. He said, it's nothing short of a tap on the shoulder. He said, you have to, just because you're big, it's, you have to go out there and meet people face to face. And I think that's, exactly. that's something that you have found to be true. Okay. So number one, volunteers, no matter the size of your church, always no, a difficulty. Number two, what's another one that you've always found? Money, 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 <laughs> money, money. Everyone says you're a large church. You have the money. People are giving. No, we need, we need, we have the same. We have to put in a budget. We have to, yes. you know, the numbers we have to purchase. We're purchasing things on a larger scale. And so we actually need more money. So money is a big you so, um, yes. Yeah, so, so what you're saying is, is that everybody thinks, Ooh, big church, tons of volunteers. Well, we've just dismantled that one. Another one, mm -hmm. somebody else might say, Ooh, big church. It has a huge budget. Well, not necessarily. And so the issues that a small church is experiencing volunteers and a discreet amount of budget, same thing. Exactly. 
Exactly. Same exact thing. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, everyone wants to say, go big, go wild, go home. And it's you need big money, big money, big money to, for those big ideas. And oftentimes people don't realize the cost it is to, you know, work in children or serve or, or, right. or putting on a production, you know, a, a Easter production or a Christmas production. That's that's everything is a cost to that. And so whereas I look at it as children's ministry is one of the legs on a chair. Yes. Uh, then we need to think of the mindset of the money that we do in budgeting as the same. And so, you know, oftentimes they say, we put big budget over here in our outreach program. We put big money, over, more money in our, our worship department. But we're just going to put a few dollars over here in kids because they'll be fine. Going to class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them Bible. All they need is snacks, you know, yes. juice and some snacks. And they're, they're good in the little curriculum. No, we need costumes. We need, you know. We curriculum need, you know, is expensive. Curriculum, Exactly. Arts and crafts. Oh, my goodness. Because we do, uh, you know, do arts and crafts with our preschool. We need when we do it on production and we have like someone like uh, Mr. Science or different people coming here on from a biblical standpoint. That's a cost. Every event is a cost. And so, and so this so, is yeah. the same thing for every mm -hmm. ministry. And so what I'm hearing you say is because some people covet, they covet the big ministry and they think in their minds, mm -hmm. oh man, if we were just big, or if I just worked at a big church, the same exact problems being overlooked, mm -hmm. not having budget and running exactly. out of volunteer resources. Now that <clears throat> the, the third one is one that I mentioned and you resonated mm -hmm. right away. So it's volunteers, it's budget, and it's mm -hmm. also space as in, I want that closet, but you want that closet. Am I right? Exactly. And it's so funny, Josh, we're uh, kind of dealing with that right now as you speak, is that uh, I'm in a shared facility. And so uh, I support our, you know, our, our school in the shared facility and the school supports us in children's ministry. But those are those times where we need space like closet space. We have all these things for Christmas time that we need to pack up, put somewhere. But the school also needs it. Exactly. Or the church needs it. And so <clears throat> space uh, is uh, is a big issue. Uh, classroom space. Do we have enough space to put our kids in? Because we break our kids up by age category. And, and so we don't, many people think all you need is a large space, put all the kids in the room. But you don't do that in kids ministry. No. We don't well, put the two-year-olds with their with, with the, your sixth with graders. The, yeah, no, exactly. no, no, it doesn't work that way. And so it's not a holding tank, right? And so again, no. big ministries, same troubles. So if you are out there and you work at a small ministry and you're like, hey, space is an issue, um, budget is an issue, and volunteers are an issue, welcome to being in a ministry context. That is the same. And so big ministries, same troubles. Well, I want to talk to you quickly now and shift gears and talk about some three big things that you have learned over the years. You've done a lot of things in ministry. We want to hear from you. What's one of the big lessons that you learned that, that like, that if, that, that are, that's a, it's a big thing that you would want to pass on. And, you know, we have an audience. So tell us, what do you think? Listening. Listen. You need to listen. You need to listen to your volunteers, listen to your parents, listen to your your men, your senior ministry leadership. Listening. Yes. Uh, sometimes we we come in with big ideas and big knowledge, and we know it all, yes. but we may need to listen because our volunteers are they're on the grounds running. They see things that we don't see, and if we don't pay attention and listen to them, for instance, they may say, you know. These two kids don't work well in this classroom. Mm -hmm. I think this is a little more, a little much for them. Maybe we need to, you know, reevaluate. But if you're a leader and you're not listening to them and says, you know what, they're they're three, they, sh they should be fine. <laughs> then you're not listening to the pulse beat of what's of helping that child be better. And so listening, listening to a parent says, you know what, we need more communication from you, yes. from your ministry. We don't know what's going on. Listen to it because you may think, you know, I'm fine. I'm sending out, you know, one email a month to the parents. They're OK. But the parents says, I need to know more listening to them. So I recommend listening to us. Yes. And I would Just, say I would say that, you know, we think 
Okay, I'll put it this way. I never led in isolation. I always sought to lead in community. And I had a, a gathering of people around me. And I watched mm -hmm. other leaders sometimes, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. And they they led as a lone ranger or they led as mm -hmm. the alpha by themselves. And they, mm -hmm. and I think that's a, a bad thing to do. I think leading in community mm -hmm. and listening. So I always encourage people to get a strategic parent who's involved in everything in the community. They are the exactly. calendar person, right? Mm -hmm. Gather another person who is the, you know, just a, a, a wide variety of people. Um, mm -hmm. The tech person, the parent, the exactly. young, the young hip adult. So this exactly. wide cross section of people that I'm running my ideas by and I'm checking mm -hmm. in with them. So listen, okay. So what's another one? Another big one for you? Time management. Okay. Time and for me, time. I want to, and I say time management is, you know, it. We have a calendar of this world of being. Everything is microwave. We want it quick, fast, and hairy. So if you continue to get things on your calendar, like yes. for instance, I was explaining all the things, and you don't manage that properly, you miss something in management, especially in kids ministry. You may miss that. Oh, I'm supposed. I had a. I'm supposed to be doing this event in two weeks and uh, I let it get away from me organizing it, time yes. management. And so you have, I, I suggest having people, like you said, Josh, around you who can help you with that. Delegate that stuff off, delegate things that you don't have to necessarily do, but a volunteer can do for you. Yes. And it helps you manage your plate easier as leaders or as a kids mid uh, ministry person. Because if you don't manage your time, you you're, won't do so care for yourself as well. You're, you're going to get destroyed. And so I would exactly. say, I would say again, if you aren't that, if you're more of a global thinker and you're kind of mm -hmm. out there and you're always kind of in the stratosphere and you don't really do so well with boots on the ground, find someone who is. And mm -hmm. really, in a sense, recruit that inside team, recruit that inside team to your exactly. deficiencies, to your deficiencies. So, okay, so time management, couldn't agree more. Uh, and, and and the third one, what would you say? I have, you know, it, it kind of goes two folds. Uh, a folds you said earlier is uh, communication, communication, communication. That's, yes. that's a big lesson. Oftentimes we don't communicate. Yes. We don't. We think, Let's just be honest. We think that we do. Exactly. And we don't communicate enough. Uh, and that means that I'm not just talking about kids ministry. I'm talking about the overall church as a whole. To other staff uh, members, letting them know what's going on. Exactly. Um, oftentimes, you know, we in small churches or large churches, uh, it's so much going on in a large church Big time. that you you, you're trying to fight to get that communication out to the congregation. So you said, well, I'm going to do that. We want the pastor to announce it. Or we want uh, it to be in our, you know, program or bulletin. But sometimes you can do more. You can have your own. We have our own social media pages for Kiss Ministry. Uh, we also have contact. Uh, where we can send out our own text messages to parents. Yes. Where we can d communicate. We have our own uh, uh, website as well. And so constant communication, newsletters. And uh, I'm, what I'm hearing from you, what I'm hearing from you, Cynthia, is a variety of ways to communicate. Communicate exactly. in a variety of ways. Because I'm telling you, somebody's going to pick it up over here. Somebody's going to pick it up here. And somebody, the only place that they look is over here. And so. Exactly. You can't necessarily, I remember one person said to me one time, well, if they don't look on this particular space, they're going to miss it. And I said, son, you're missing it because exactly. like it's our job to meet them where they are. Okay. So we talked about uh, a lot of different things. One was communication. One mm -hmm. was uh, 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 time management. And what was your first one again? I forget. Listening. Listening. Very good. I didn't listen. You see? See, Joshua, you didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Well, here's one thing that I want to say um, that I think that, uh, lo and behold, in all seriousness, one of the things about time management that you mentioned that we kind of skipped over is that I think it's really, really, really important for us to say no 
Now, you had mentioned that before the call yes. started. So speak to that just for a minute, because I think that's we can't miss that one. Uh, oftentimes, every opportunity to uh, do things that you think is, a, you know, an opportunity to do something great, may be not the season or time to do it. And yes. so it may take up more of your time than you, you are able to give or give productively. And sometimes, like you said, Josh, and I love how you, you phrased what I was saying is, I have no in your vo or vocabulary. Vocabulary. Don't say yes to everything. You don't have to. Have it's the okay. word no as a part of your vocabulary. Matter of fact, I have actually had to learn over the years, and I'm a, I'm a, I love to get involved with something. I love to do stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I have made no my default response. Now that's not not because I'm a negative person, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about opportunities that are going to extract time, energy, mm -hmm. resources. And it, 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 it really looks exciting, but it's going to take me from my main calling. Talk to us. Well, also, Josh, can I give you an example for saying no here? Uh, in a church setting here, here uh, we have children's ministry. And then we also I oversee uh, our child care program as well. So those are two, di two different two, you know, sub, two different ministries. Yes. Two different ministries. And so during this season of uh, what we're going through our, our pandemic, Mm -hmm. uh, we did not have the staffing or the manpower to do those extracurricular things that, you know, child care does. And so I had to tell several ministries at this time, no, we're not able to do that. Yes. Uh, was it a little hard? But they understood because I don't want us to give subpar. That's you right. Know, uh, you don't want to do a bad job. And so exactly. the, funny, the funny thing is, it sounds like that you exercised your backbone and you said no to another ministry or another opportunity. And if you're wishy-washy and you're an absolute mm -hmm. dyed in the wool people pleaser, you're in huge trouble. And, and, and actually the ministry that, you know, I had to say no to was very understanding after I, now you have to explain, sometimes right. you have to explain your nose, but then they understood that you wasn't saying no, all the time you were just saying for this particular time is a no and and people need to understand that your no may not be always a no but know your season of no yes know that this is not the right timing for that and then maybe the next time that same thing may come back around and it's a yes and so i i looked at that as my no uh, i had to i had an opportunity to go to the bahamas to speak believe it or not oh everyone said you turned down the Bahamas. Uh, but it wasn't the right season because at the time I, I, I am uh, fostering my nephew in yes. college. Yes. And we were preparing for him to uh, go, you know, that, you know, season of packing up everything and traveling in the vehicles and going off and saying the goodbye and crying in tears. <laughs> we were doing that, uh, my husband and I and uh, his father. And I just feel like that was more important yes. than me taking away, than that taking a speaking engagement engagement in now, yes, the Bahamas is nice. I'm not of saying course. That but what you're saying is in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. that saying no to that, or let's let's say that you said yes to the Bahamas, it would have been mm -hmm. saying no to other priorities. We only it's have it. so much to give. Matter of fact, I just two days ago, um, I, I counseled a senior pastor and I said, I think that you should say no to the next 10 opportunities that come your way. And he goes, well, I'm one for one. I just said no today. Well, the funny thing is, is that as you find any level of success, people are going mm -hmm. to come out of the woodwork and ask exactly. things of you. And if you're not disciplined with your no, you're going to be in huge trouble. Well, let's kind of close it out. What would you change after 25 years of ministry, after having success at some of the largest churches in the country, what would you go back and change if you could do something different? I don't know it all. <laughs> I came out, you know, I, I've been to school, kids ministry conferences across the country. I was coming into the church like I knew it. I was going to tell them and I knew nothing. <laughs> I knew nothing. I didn't I wasn't open to learn. Right. I mean, to hear advice from senior people, I was not, honestly, uh, because I thought I knew it all. 
Right. And you know, and you talked about it, Josh, that mindset is you're young, you know, and you think you know it all. And since all the senior people are, you know, they're old, they don't know what they're talking about. They're yes, senior yes, they do. For <laughs> they're sitting there for a reason. And so I would say youthful zeal is no match for seasoned wisdom. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, and I, I literally had someone to tell me, and she, and she served, she's actually 100 years old, oh but my she Lord. served when I first started so many years ago in children's ministry. She's now not serving anymore, but she's still, you know, here with us on this side. And she, she would tell me, she said, just wait. <laughs> she said, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. And it literally did because when I had no knowledge of what I was doing in a particular area of kids ministry. And I was doing events. Yes. I had to go back to senior people and say, how do you do this? Okay. That's a skill. It's a skill, isn't it? Exactly. And I said, I know on paper what to do, but how do you make it come together where it felt like it was, you know, it was gelling. And one person said, you did the first thing you came and asked. Yes. And so leaning into people who have gone before you, right? So mm -hmm. you would say, looking back, that you maybe don't know as much as you think you know. Exactly. Well, Cynthia, this is fantastic. So listen, no matter whether you're in a big church or whether in your small church, folks, the challenges are the same. Volunteers are always going to... I remember Cynthia, somebody told me one time, it really cracked me up, actually. They said, Josh, what do you think is going to be the the biggest challenge in the next year of ministry. And I said, wait for it. Volunteers again. Right? Volunteers. Always. And so no matter the size of your church, th these are limited resources, whether it's volunteers, whether it's budget or whether it's space. But I think what I'm hearing you say to, as a, as a big, big, big conclusion, it comes down to getting yourself around other seasoned great leaders don't lead alone, and certainly don't say yes to everything. Am I right? Exactly. Well, Cynthia, exactly. thank you so much for being with us. I've been anticipating and waiting for this particular interview for a while. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And uh, and like I said, they got this. We got this. And, 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 and so thank you, Josh, for letting me be a part of Absolutely. Well, it's always a joy to have you on here. Hey, listen, gang, my name is Josh Denhart. Thank you again for checking out what we're doing here with Lead Ministry Live and the Lead Volunteers podcast. If you want to find out more information, head to leadministry.com where you can find out all that you would need to know about the courses, the coaching, and more. Thank you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.